Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? How much has been a good week here? It is December 18th, 1998. Christmas is coming. Yeah, that's right. And the goose is getting fat. <laughs> uh, Carol. Yeah. Are you ready to taste some of Aunt B's pickles? What in the hell is this title name? So that's the title of the episode, Aunt B's Pickles. There, I, I assume it references the episode of the Andy Griffith show where Aunt B was trying to make pickles to, okay. enter, to enter into the pickle contest. And even though she's great at making pies that, you know, make men like sniff the, the aroma of and float towards her window or whatever, she's not good at making pickles. And her pickles are terrible and have always been terrible. Interesting. I think Andy and Barney refer to them as like kerosene pickles or something like that. Oh, wow. But they're not good. But anyway, so she can't beat, I think her name is Clara. I, 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 it's been a long time since I've seen this episode. In the pickle contest. And I think they sneak and, and put store-bought pickles in her pickle jar to like fool her. And she's like, oh, these, these are good enough to win the contest. <laughs> I'm going to enter the contest. Uh, you know how I pee talks. Um, I don't actually. So, Andy. Uh, so anyway, I assume that re- it's a reference to that, but I still don't understand the reference. Is it the dresses? That's because, all I could think when you were telling the story. That's what I was thinking of. Because but. he's replacing the dresses. I I don't know. He's not replacing but the yeah, dresses. He's not, he's not replacing the dresses. I don't get it. He's just like buying them. Like he's trying behind to her help, back. He's trying to help her by being a liar. I don't know. Some. <laughs> Somebody that wrote on this episode was like, I remember when I was a boy, I watched the Andy Griffith show. I loved Aunt B's pickles. But yeah, like, I mean, they don't make any kind of reference in the whole episode about pickles or Aunt B or any of that. So no. you'd really have to know. And even then, like you said, it's kind of hard to figure it out. Yeah, it's weird. It's like, uh, it's not it's not as as clear as some of the title episodes. Mm-hmm. The, that one episode, which was titled uh, The One Where Steve Sees a Bus f- Phase Through a Garbage Truck. The truck One Where, it. like, uh, that's like all the Friends episodes. Yeah. I know, it was a joke. It wasn't yeah. actually called that. They, they called have good titles. Angel Save the Day or something. Yeah, I agree. They do have good titles. And Seinfeld had good titles, too. Did Seinfeld do The One Where? No. Seinfeld's titles were always like The Contest. Okay. The handshake, okay. the whatever. Larry David's philo- the the one of the creators, along with uh, with Jerry Seinfeld, and the writer of most of the episodes. His philosophy was that he didn't want writers wasting a lot of time trying to think of episode titles. Sure, when they could be writing the fucking script. That makes sense. So that's yeah, that's what they all all were. The contest, the whatever, mm-hmm. you know, the man hands or, or whatever. Um, the soup Nazi. The soup Nazi. I love the soup Nazi. No soup are you. <laughs> hoo Anyway, uh, remember Elaine was like, you look like Al Pacino. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bread, $3 extra. Oh, but you just gave it to him for free. Oh, so yeah. You want bread? Yes, yeah, so please. No soup are you. <laughs> Come back one year. Uh, anyway. So we're going to talk about 902. No, no, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to talk about recently ended uh, sitcom uh, Seinfeld. By the way, what did you think of Seinfeld's last episode? They all go to prison. Um, I kind of hated it. Yeah, lots of people hated it. I actually think it's really good. Really? I'm like one of the only people in the world that's like, I actually think that ending is, is enjoyable. Do you feel like it's appropriate? Yeah, they are. They're, they're, it's like... It's a fucking punishment. They all have to stay together. Like, they're all terrible, narcissistic people. And the it's almost like fucking hell, like purgatory or whatever. Like, the end of the show is like, they're all forced to be together. 
Because wow. it doesn't make sense. There's one woman and three guys, and they're like, you're going to jail, everybody, for, for one year. They have to go to jail for one year, right? It's like the soup Nazi. Yeah, exactly. They have to go to jail for one year, but you're all going to sit in the same cell. <laughs> what? Yeah, it is stupid. So it's like, I think it's metaphorical for like, this is their punishment. That right. They have to be together because they bring each other down. Yeah. Makes sense. So 90210. Yes. <laughs> Um, Speaking of bringing us down, right? We watched an episode of Nine Hundred Two and Oh. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't great as yeah. per usual. We are rocketing towards season nine. I don't know if we're going to. So, uh, I guess spoilers for life, everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, I said spoilers for life, everyone. Oh, I heard you. I'm just wondering what the fuck you mean. This week is the last week we're watching a movie. Of 1998. Right. So tomorrow's release is the last new release of the year. The week after that, which is right around Christmas, uh, we're going to be releasing our best of that we do every year uh, in the first week of January, which we're also usually off. I am putting together a best of the Buffy the Vampire Slayer show and Dawson's Creek, and that will be one tape. And that will take place, that will be in place of the movie that we would usually do that week. And then second week of January, we'll be back after our little two-week vacation from the holidays. And we're not sure right now whether we're going to do episodes of 90210 in those two weeks. So this might also be the last 90210 we do in 1998 because we're trying to catch up we have the ability to just watch two more episodes and on our our uh, VHS tape and like record them for you guys, right. or we might take those two weeks off. Yeah, it's a fun surprise because we haven't figured it out yet. We're playing it by ear. Yeah, we're not sure what we want to do, but anyway, this so might you- this might be Aunt Bee's pickles might be the last episode you get to listen to in nineteen ninety eight. Everyone, yeah, you may or may not be listening next week. Sorry. Well, next week you'll for sure be listening because you'll be listening to the best of. Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know. So we'll as get far ready as to listen to this, as far as the actual episode, yeah. Um, I don't know. Who do you want to start with? I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling. What about Donna and fucking what's his name? What were you gonna say you were feeling? Donna and uh, what's his name? Sure. Noah. But what were you gonna say? I was gonna say Steve. Oh, okay. Because you asked a question, then you were, then you immediately, I immediately, answered immediately it. answered it. But I didn't, I didn't anticipate you immediately answering it. <laughs> I tried to a- answer your question. Thank you. We can start with Steve. You're welcome for interrupting. <laughs> we can start with Steve. That's fine. No. Steve's storyline is very brief. So I don't think it's that brief. Oh, okay. So last episode, he Previous was pretending. Job, no, you know. He was pretending to be Ted. Yeah. To get in bed with this girl. Better off Ted. And then he uh, had second thoughts when they were actually going to have sex. And he decided to tell her that he wasn't Ted, but he still wanted her. He had pre-performance anxiety. (laughs) Um, So she's pissed as hell, like, Mm. understandably. But he's not giving up. Just like uh, the guy from Network, Howard Beale. She's mad as hell and she's not going to take it anymore. There you go. Um, You saw Network. No. Yes, you did. No. We watched it. (laughs) I don't remember. It's the one with the the news. Oh, the I news do. Reporter. It was. I don't like, think I liked it. Mad as hell. And I'm not going to tell you. It's a fantastic. Movie. I know you liked it. It's depressing, but it's a fantastic movie. Anyway, you know one of the things I hate is uh, the pe- people will say like uh, it's more relevant now than it was at the time. And that's not true. Anytime there's a movie with like some kind of political commentary or something like that. People are like, it's more relevant now. No, it was. It's it's the same relevance. It's just because nothing ever fucking changes, <laughs> right? That's what Steve talks to this girl. I can't remember her name now. Oh, you don't? No. Okay. Do you? Yeah. What's her name? I can't tell you. The fuck? You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to try to remember it. I don't want to. I think it's Claire. Claire? No. Susan? No. Stacy? No. Um, oh, you're a liar. 
<laughs> you don't know the name at all. <laughs> oh my I love goodness. How, I love how long it took you to figure that out. <laughs> anyway, um, he talks to her and he tries to get her to agree to go on a date with him. Right. And it's bizarre. She's like, fuck you, fuck off, absolutely not. No. And <laughs> I mean, kind of. And then he's like, well, what if I find Ted, you know, and, or, no, that's what he, he, he found Ted. Sorry, he already found Ted for her, <laughs> but he won't. Wow. What? Okay, last episode. Hey, now. <laughs> last episode, he said to her, hey. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to fucking find Ted for you. If that's what, if it, if it, if it takes that to make you happy, I, I'd, I'd rather you be happy. I'm going to, if you love something, let, let it go. Sting said that or, or Paul McCartney, I don't remember, but, uh, we're going to do it and I'm going to find him. And she's like, yeah, whatever. Fucking call me when you do. So he found him. <laughs> yes. And he tells her that he has his phone number, his work address, whatever, but he won't give it to her unless she goes on the date with him. Yes, that's what he says. He's like, he's like, but I want you to go out, like, give me a try, like, and everything. There's something here. And uh, he's like, if you like Ted, try me. It's ridiculous, um, though. He's like, there's something here. What could be there? I mean, like, she does not know you. You were pretending to be a different person. I guess physical attraction, like, underlying lust or whatever. But, I mean, it's Steve. So probably that's only on his end. <laughs> But anyway, so she she's like, that's blackmail. And he's like, that's right. And uh, she's like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Yeah. So they go on a date. And it doesn't go well. Well, I mean, like, we don't see the date, really. We see him fixing a ti- his tire mm-hmm. on his Corvette. So, like, obviously he got a flat. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry about the restaurant. Let's, let me... let. Let me, he looks right at the camera and says, let me tell you, audience, what, ha- <laughs> what happened. Why, why show you when I can just tell you what happened? Right. The show. And he's like, uh, she's like, the restaurant was nice. And he goes, you fucking had the, you got the wrong thing. You had to send it back. And the waiter was rude. And, and uh, there were people making anti-Semitic remarks. And there was a, a cross burning in the corner. Oh, my God. <laughs> and she was like, but you handled it all so well. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, yeah, whatever. And she, she's like, but I really, I had an enjoyable date. She's like, but I want to see Ted. Yeah. He's like, and he's like so sad. He's like, really, you do? Okay, I'll set it up. And then. No, 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 no. No. He says, write this fucking information down. And he gives her the information. And she's like, I can't do it. Why don't you do it? Oh, yeah. You set it up for me because if we're in the sa- if I'm in the same room with him, then I'll have to. But like, I'm just so nervous. And he's like, "Fine, I'll set it up for you." Yeah. So instead of doing the like normal nice thing that he said he'd do, he then hires somebody. Sort of. I mean... To pretend to be Ted. At first, he was pretending to be Ted. Now he gets somebody else to pretend to be Ted. It's like, what in the actual fuck are you doing? Kind of. He's a broken human being. I mean, like, he can't just be honest. Uh Uh-huh. He can't just be, like, normal. He's just got all the underhanded bullshit. So I will point out that he did invite Ted to the restaurant. And then... When he met someone interviewing for a job at the Beverly Beat, which we'll get back to. And he has like a sudden brainstorm of, oh, you're a nervous fucking... Not great looking. Yeah, loser. Uh, You ever pretend to be somebody else for a financial story? And he's like, because Ted works in finance. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. And he's like, all right, why don't you uh, pretend to be some guy named Ted and that's when we're like, oh, fuck. Like, I was yelling at the screen. Yeah, you were very heated about this. Because <laughs> it's a bad idea. So, anyway, they're there at the restaurant. Which looks like a really cool fucking restaurant, by the way. Yeah, it really did. It was, like, all outdoor. There was, like, fire pits and stuff. Yeah, yeah not a bad idea in Los Angeles. Yeah. And so she's like, how am I going to know when it's Ted? 
And he's like, I, I got it all worked out. And Ted's there at the bar waiting for for Steve. Because Steve basically said, hey, uh, I have an investment opportunity. Meet me. Like, that's how he got it. Mm. There. But every girl in the in the bar is <laughs> fawning over this guy. He's not that good looking. No, he's not. He's fine, but like he's not. They didn't. They didn't find like the most. They didn't go to central casting. It was like, give me the most handsome guy. Yeah, it's not Tom Cruise. So, anyway, uh, Ted walks in, fake Ted, mm-hmm. fed, and <laughs> Steve goes up to him. I I can't remember that guy's name either. And he's like, hey. Uh, let me tell you something. You're not going to be a fucking financial guy. See that guy over there that every woman's fi- fawning over? Uh, she's like, basically gives him the whole story. I love this girl. She's in love with this guy. And he's like, hey, oh, and you want me to pretend to be that guy because I'm a fucking loser. And he's like, yeah. And he goes, listen, uh, Steve, that's not love. Yeah. That's not a real test of love. The real test of love is is to have her fucking meet the real Ted and still choose you, you fucking idiot. Like, don't you want her to be happy even if that makes you miserable? You know, that's what true love is is really, you know. And, like, all the stuff he already said, Mm -hmm. Steve already said in the previous episode, and this guy says it, and Steve's like, oh, I guess you're right. And then, so he invites, he he introduces her to the real Ted. Yeah, finally all clicks in his mind. And he's trying to talk. He's like, hey, you know, like, oh, my name's Steve. And they're like, oh, oh, my God, it's you, Ted. Oh, you're <laughs> so hot. And Ted's like, I thought I lost you forever. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Like, Steve's just like, mm, and I don't need to be here. And they literally, like, just walk off with each other. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. So he did the right thing, and it did not work out well for him. Yeah. But I suspect that... They will, like, have some problem, and she'll come back to Steve. How much of the episode did you pay attention to? Did you fall asleep at some point that I'm not aware of? I didn't think so, but you look, like, really amused, so... I'm very amused. (laughs) Apparently I did black out at some point. Because towards the end of the episode, there's a knock on the door, and Steve answers... And guess who it is? Oh. Girl. Yeah, I forgot about that. And she's like, <laughs> I just came over to say thank you. And he was like, well, invite me to the fucking wedding. You know, that's the least you can do or whatever. I'm glad you guys found each other. And she's like, let me tell you, Steve. I, I met Ted, and he was everything that I wished he would be. And Steve's like, yeah, I know. And she goes, but you are more. <laughs> And he's like, what? And then they kiss. So that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but it is like, how is he more? That could more? be the tagline to every episode of, <laughs> of Night of Two and Oh, my God. I don't know how he's more. I don't know. Because, I mean, like, they had one bad date and a bunch of pretend dates. And does she really know him? Really? Does she, she really know Ted? Yeah. She didn't, know. she didn't even give Ted a chance. Maybe she had sex with Ted and he had a small penis. And she was like, you know what? <laughs> Micro penis. You know what? You're more. <laughs> you have to be, Steve. I felt something when we were kissing up against the door. <laughs> that must be what it is. Oh, goodness. Oh, Ted's not so good in bed. Well, congratulations to Steve, though, because yeah. he, he deserves to have another woman. And, you know, the minute... And congratulations to you for coming up with an alternate storyline that <laughs> they could have done. Yeah, oops. <laughs> I try. I love... Uh, you do. You put in every bit of effort <laughs> that you possibly could. I mean, I guess I could have, like, I don't know, stood up for the whole episode. Then maybe I would stay awake. <laughs> they need to make it better. That's all. Yeah. It's 40, min- 40 minutes is too long. <laughs> it is. It needs to be a 15-minute long show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could just tell us everything. You don't need to show us anything. Just, like, each character could come up, look directly at the camera, and be like, in this episode... My mom wants to get married. Right. Uh, All right. 
So that's not the entire episode, Carol. There's more that happens. Okay. Where do you want to yeah. go next? Well, you said you wanted to start with um, somebody. I did. <laughs> I did. Motherfucker, who was it? I, I almost don't even want to say. Donna and Noah. Oh, you remembered something. Yes. <laughs> yes, Donna and Noah. Donna and Noah and Aunt B's pickles. <laughs> I mean, her fucking dresses. Yes. So, I don't really understand, and I was awake, but I don't really understand all of this. Like That's, some, that's somehow worse <laughs> that you were awake, but you don't understand this storyline. The business, like, aspect of it. Like, oh, you don't understand the business? <laughs> if you do. <laughs> no, okay. So... Noah pretended that the store bought her bought her designs. Yeah, but in reality, they only what they like. <laughs> oh my God, Carol! <laughs> they're just okay. So I'm going to explain how showing them. I'm like... going to explain how. Yeah, they're just showing them. You can't buy them. <laughs> they're of display only. I mean, I know he lied to her, but I just don't get it. <laughs> I'm going to explain the business to you. <laughs> Please do. So I guess, I don't. I didn't know that clothes shops did this, but apparently, uh, just like they contract with whatever, the big name designers like Donna Karen and shit like that, which gets name checked in this, in this episode. Mm-hmm. I guess they also buy from local people if they think they're good enough. And generally what a store will do is buy, we're going to buy a hundred Donna Karen dresses put them on our our stuff and then Mm -hmm. like they pay for them and then they make the money when they sell right and i guess they do that with local designers too sometimes if they're good enough and that's what donna thought they did that they were showing faith in her designs like hey these will definitely sell so we'll buy them from you and then they bought them from her and wrote her a check right what noah did behind her back was say, look, take them on consignment. Consignment means that no money changes hands. We'll we'll have the dresses here in our store, and if someone buys them, we'll pay you your percentage. We keep okay. our percentage. We'll pay you. So so there's you know it's it's and 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 he said any anything that doesn't sell, I'll buy back basically. Um, so that's what he did. And Donna is acting like this entire episode, it kind of pisses me off because Donna's acting like she wasn't a complete freak last episode (laughs) and the beginning of this episode because she was, she was all like, they, they went to several different places that were like, no, we don't want these dresses. And she was like, oh my God, I, I fucking, I, I. I overdosed and like I, I got fired from my job and I'm a fucking loser and I hate this and I hate everybody and I'm just gonna kill myself and give up. That's basically what she what she said last That's episode. A, a, a bit of an exaggeration, but yes. <laughs> and then this episode, she shows up at the store before they open. Yeah, where her dresses are there and is hanging around. That's very weird. The dresses and she's like, oh, nobody's buying them yet. The store's been open ten minutes <laughs> and like. Oh, uh, one person, one lady bought it, and she's like, "Oh my god, she's returning it!" You know and stuff. And she goes up to him, and she's like, "Excuse me, why are you returning this dress?" She's like, "Do you like it?" And she goes, "I love it." And she's like, "I thought it was a Donna Karen, especially at these prices, but it's apparently a Donna Martin, whoever the fuck that is." And Donna's like, "Oh," and then she walks away, and it's like, "Yeah, that's not good." It's stupid though. Like, why does it matter? They liked the dress enough to buy it. I don't I don't get why that matters the the name but it's Beverly Hills names mean a lot Yeah, to I guess. So, anyway, Noah comes up while she's freaking out and everything about this and he's like, "You know, just relax or whatever." And then he buys all the dresses. Mm-hmm. We don't we're not supposed to know that, but it's pretty obvious. Right. Cuz like in one day all the dresses sold. He's very concerned with her feelings apparently. Like, I mean, it's nice. I mean, and you know, he has a lot of money, so it's easy for him to buy her happiness. Yeah. But I guess it's pretty dishonest. 
I guess. I mean, like, I don't, I, I don't think he did anything particularly wrong necessarily. I mean, yeah, his heart's in the right place. He, because this is what it comes down to. Like, she's like, so she finds out because they, they get the check for the dresses that he bought. So he paid for the dresses and then bought them back. So he's like paid twice. <laughs> and uh, she's like, well, that's a mistake because they paid us up front. You know, mm-hmm. like, and he's like, oh, you know, whatever, I'll take it. And like, and then it comes out that he did he did it behind the back. She's like, they would never do consignment. A shop like that doesn't do consignment, which obviously they wouldn't. Cause right. It's some big retail store. And he's like, no, I know a guy in corporate and I pulled some strings and he did it for me. And, um, and she's like, you don't fucking believe in me at all. And it's, that's, and that's what it comes. And then she, later she finds out he bought all the dresses, which is even worse. Right. And then she has this like, you know, we're breaking up thing kind of whatever. Uh, I mean, she, she doesn't really say that, but it's like, she's very pissed off and doesn't want to be around him. And she's like, you, you never believed in me at all. It, I it's I don't think it's that at all. No, like he was he he was reading into everything that you were doing that you wanted that you needed. Uh, what's instant gratification mm-hmm. with this? That you needed instant feedback of you're on the right track. He doesn't think that like it, it that your stuff's never going to sell because I can't imagine that he's thinking. I'll just buy up her dresses forever. <laughs> right. No, I mean, I don't he know. Wants, like, he wants to give her a win. Yeah. He explained himself that, like, you know, with the overdose and how she's been lately, like, he just felt like she needed this. And she, she's like, the belief in myself has never been a problem. But my experience with men over the past year has been bad. And it's like, you... Last couple episodes, you were you fucking were not believing in yourself. What are you right. talking about? Yeah. She's acting a little nutty. Yeah, she's just kind of flailing. I feel like maybe they just want her to break up with him. I don't know what the so fuck's they're going on. creating more stuff. So- Although, really, if they wanted her to break up with him, wouldn't like him raping Valerie have been a good enough reason? Yeah, that's true. But then later in the episode, uh, they're at a uh, a venue. We'll, we'll get to that later, too, at a uh, a church-like venue. And yeah. um, he's like, look, I want to talk to you. And then he's like, he explains himself, like you said. And she's like, you know, I understand. and I, I apologize. And, you know, I know what you were trying to do. But just, like, I will believe in myself and not spiral. And, and if I need to lean on you, support me. But don't try to solve everything with your money. They were like, deal, deal. And he goes, but I'll tell you what, you're going to have to get to work or whatever because uh, somebody, you know, whatever, another uh, place called for you. And she's like, oh, she goes, I left a sample with her, the owner of this, you know, whatever store. And she's like, she probably wants to send it back. She wants to take me to take it back. And he goes, not unless uh, she expects you to go to Milan because mm-hmm. she's there on, you know, like fa- with, for fashion week or whatever. And she's been wearing your, your design and it's been getting like talks from all the people around there. She wants to order a hundred dresses from you. And she's like, this isn't like you pulling strings. He's like, no, this is all you. So. Like, it did happen for and then they kiss and everything's happy. It seems very convenient. Yeah. Do you even almost believe as if it? The, almost as if the right. Yes, I do believe it. But I only believe it because the writers like right. to button shit up like this. True. That's true. There's no indication that it's... I don't think he's lying again. That would be weird. That'd be stupid. But, you know, that's he's not how Steve. it goes. He's not Steve. Right. <laughs> All right. Valerie? Are you, are you hanging on? Yeah. Well, there's Valerie and there's there's Valerie and all that's wrapped up with that. Mm-hmm. And then there is uh, Brandon. Mm-hmm. I guess Brandon first. Well, either one, whatever you want to go to. So Brandon last episode said he was going to stay with the paper and stay with Steve. Yeah, it, it's really it really frustrates me. How they establish things in one episode, and then the next episode, they completely take everything back. Yeah. 
because this episode, he's just like, yeah, I got an interview over at the uh, Chronicle. Yeah. The Los Angeles Chronicle. I believe that's a, not a real newspaper. And so Steve's just like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do? And Brandon's like, yeah, who gives a shit? Kick rocks, asshole. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And he goes and he gets hired on the spot in this interview. Yeah. Which seems odd Mm -hmm. for a established newspaper to just be like, oh, we're just going to interview you and hire you. But he just, la, 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 takes the job. No big deal. They've seen samples of his writing and they're like, oh, good, you know. And then they discover on their way out, like him and the other guy who just got hired. Yeah, both two dudes that just got hired the same day. I was like, that's weird. Uh, They discover that the regular writers are on strike and they are scabs. Yep. I feel like that's not something that should have been a surprise. Yeah, that I said, like when we were watching this, I said, I don't know how you work in the news. And, you know, I would assume you keep your, your finger to the pulse or whatever. And not know there's an impending strike. Yeah. For the major newspaper in your area. But even assuming they're just really bad at their jobs, they don't know because of that, you'd think that the uh, paper would tell them? Yeah, I don't know what the rules are on that. To let you, like, you know. I guess they don't have to say anything. They're non. They're non-union. Yeah. The people are hiring, like, they don't have to hire into the union. I don't know what the, the exact rules are of that. But, yeah, they're going to be scabs. We had a major newspaper strike mm-hmm. uh, in our area about, I guess, four years ago or so, four, three or four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. And it lasted four months. It was no good. But, you know, eventually it got uh, it got taken care of, so. And yeah, there was all those no scab signs everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. Yes, the <laughs> white signs with the black lettering and the you know the the X through it. No scabs. Yeah. Yep. Um, but Brandon initially is just like whatever. What? Quick, quick story. Our friend Ryan used to deliver newspapers, and during that strike, he was riding on his bicycle. And uh, delivering newspapers. <laughs> we just jokingly, uh, me and like two friends of mine were like, scab! Fucking scab! <laughs> and we run over and like shove him off his bike Aww. and pretend, we were pretending to like hit him and stuff like that. And he's like, it's the Oakland Press! Because <laughs> he delivered the Oakland Press. And the <laughs> ones that were on strike were the Detroit News right. and the Detroit Free Press. That's funny. But that poor kid, that's... I mean, like, you may have been joking, but you shoved him off his bike? He like, didn't what get hurt. Fuck? It was fine. <sighs> of course it was. This kid <laughs> carved... This kid, like, cut his arm one time when we were on the football team. He cut his arm and, with the blood, wrote Psycho on the wall. Oh, dear God. The fuck? So we used to call him Psycho. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, uh, Anyway, so... Yeah, he's going to be a scab. And Steve has to hire a new editor. To which replace is him. Yeah. why he interviews the dude that he ends up trying to make the next Ted. But Brandon, at first, has no qualms about taking the job. He's like, it's a job I want, whatever. And then they're, they're like, what, it, receptionist, whoever it is, the, the woman that works in the yeah, paper, yeah, yeah. has been making it known. They're slave. Yeah, basically, throughout the episode, she's feeling, like, way underappreciated and overworked. Because she doesn't have health insurance, she doesn't have sick days, she doesn't, yeah, all this stuff. And she's doing all kinds of personal shit for Steve, like picking up his dry cleaning, which is kind of demeaning. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, and she points out to Brandon that, you know, this is not right, you're taking somebody's job. I was going to say that... The episode doesn't know what it wants to say, but I think the episode does know what it wants to say. What do you think it wants to say? I think the episode is saying that unions are good. Okay. I think the episode is saying that, like, that's, like, that's the backbone or or whatever, unions. You would think, because Brandon, as portrayed, has been fairly liberal, you would think that he would also think unions are good yeah but i don't know if it's like greed or really, like he, he will compromise his principles sometimes based he on will. personal gain which is weird because he used to be so ideologically rigid well people er, change in the earlier episodes but um 
Yeah, he's like, I'll tell you what, I think they should be fucking happy with what they got. Yeah. And uh, he ends up crossing the picket line. At first, he doesn't cross the picket line. Like, he, she, she uh, gets to him. Then he does cross the picket line for one story. And then the, the main guy, like the, the main writer, uh, the old school dude's like, hey, it was a good story, kid. Uh, you should make it just one story, though. Like, you know, take credit for the story, but don't take the job. And he's like, jobs like this don't come around very very often, you know. So, and he's like, hey, you know, we're fighting for, for shit. And then, and then he gives the, the story about, let me tell you about uh, fucking a guy that grew up dirt fucking poor in the 30s and shit like that. We could barely had a pot to piss in. And then by the 50s, we were solidly middle class because my dad got a union job and everything. And. And I even got to go to college, and I became a writer, and, like, unions built this fucking country. Right. So, in the end, Brandon ends up staying with Steve. Yep. Like he said he would, anyway. Yeah, it's... The whole thing is weird. It's like... It feels also like he's... I don't know, like, I don't like his disloyalty... Yeah. ...to the Beverly Beats, either. I don't either. I mean, like, they started this together... And, like, he was talking about leaving last episode. Now he's talking about leaving again. Like, if I were Steve, I'd be looking for somebody else. Yeah, he's kind of being an asshole. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's kind of his MO lately. Yeah. But, yeah, so everything works out for them, I guess. And uh, I think the strike gets settled or whatever. I don't remember what happened with that. I feel like that happened. But, you know, who knows? I was asleep, apparently. Uh, But speaking of being asleep, the acting in this last... uh, this last thing. I, there, at times, the acting's very good, but I'll tell you what. The opening scene of this is some of the worst acting I've ever seen from Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Yeah, who is in not gen- good. Who is in general a good actress. Yeah. But it's her birthday. Yeah. They're throwing her a surprise party. Mm-hmm. Surprise parties are kind of dumb, honestly. Like they're dicey. That's a risk. I, I mean, just watching this, it's like you know, you got people coming, and they're trying to have people arrive early so she can be surprised. But they're showing up right when she's supposed to be, and it's always like that. Like the the person whose party it is always misses the beginning of the party because mm-hmm. you've got to count on the other person to get them there right at the right time. Yep, it's fucked up. It's complicated. Exactly. Not my favorite thing. But uh, she's there, like David and her outside, and she's like, I'll tell you what, I fucking love this house. We get to be alone and bang <laughs> and shit. Yeah. And he's like, oh, but it's your birthday. And she's like, yeah, it's the best time to be alone and bang. And uh, <laughs> then they open the door, and everyone's like, surprise. And she's like, ugh. Yeah, she looks horrified. And th- that's fine acting. Yeah. But uh, then her mom, Michelle Williams, comes up to her and is like, hey. Uh, why do you always look confused when I say that? Because she is ugly and Michelle Williams is not. Oh, Michelle Phillips, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I always get those two confused. Yeah, Michelle Phillips of the, you know, the uh, Mackenzie Phillips is not. Okay. But anyway, so uh, she, John Phillips' is former wife. She, uh, mamas and the papas. She, um, she comes up and she's like, oh my God, I love you, honey, and it's your day and everything's about you. And then um, she looks at her and she goes, wait a second, something's about me. And she's like, what? She's like, you felt it, didn't you? What are you talking about, Mom? (laughs) The ring, I'm getting engaged. And like she makes it all about her her engagement to uh, Bill Taylor. Her mom is an asshole. I don't like her mom. So then, yeah, absolutely. So then Tiffany Amber Thiessen is supposed to look surprised, I guess, (laughs) and then looks over at Kelly. Kelly. And uh, like D- David or somebody's like, hey, you two are going to be sisters. And they look at each other like, uh. Yeah, it was un- like the worst look I've ever seen. Terrible acting. Just yeah. not good. I mean, they're trying to look disgusted and shocked, but yeah, it just looks very fake. So they really rush through this plot line, too. Yeah. Where it's like they have one scene where Kelly and and what's her name? Valerie are together Mm -hmm. and they come together for a common goal. Right. Exactly. To fight an enemy. Just like when uh, Skeletor and He-Man came together to fight Serpentor or whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, No, it's when uh, Cobra Commander and and G.I. Joe got together to fight Serpentor. 
Okay. In the GI Joe movie, when he turned him, when he turned to, when he turned Cobra Commander into like an actual snake and stuff like that, he's like, I'm being turned into a snake because of my dog. See, you're assuming I actually watched that shit because because Doctor Mindbender and holy fuck, man, focus. Anyway, focus. Uh, so. So anyway, um, if you if you watch the GI Joe movie, you know what I'm talking about. So they come together, and that one other person gets it. They come together at the Max or uh, the Peach Fest. Oh my lord! Yeah, what the hell? Slater shows up. It's just this '90s like this S- like S- pop culture shit all in your brain. Slater shows up and he's like, uh, "Hey guys, we got to stop this wedding." <laughs> um, I bet Zach fifty bucks we'd stop the wedding. But anyway, so they they go to the peach pit and they have one scene where they're like, "We got to put a stop to these these people." Uh, you talk to my mom, I'll talk to your dad, and we'll get it done. Which is stupid too. Like, what kind of influence do they have over each other's parents anyway? I don't know. But they do try to talk to them, and they're like, "Ah, oh, we don't care." Yeah. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't matter. And then. Eventually, Valerie's like, oh, they, they look cute together. And Kelly's like, are you being defeated or whatever? And she's like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Valerie gives up. She's just like, oh, they look happy. And then yeah, as it's soon. Like, it's so it's so quick. As soon as that happens, as soon as they're like, OK, I guess our parents are going to get married. We'll just deal with it. And mm-hmm. they're like, oh, nope, not going to happen. Guess what? Bill Taylor's still an asshole. But I mean, like they have the whole like wedding scene. He stands her up at the fucking altar. Yeah. One of the worst things you can do. What a dick. What an absolute... Like, he took Valerie's money and broke her mom's heart. Like, he yep. is the worst. He is. Like, and that's going to make her and Kelly hate each other even more, I'm sure. I don't know. What do you think? Well, Kelly seemed pretty upset. Yeah. She's the one that has to break the news to Michelle Phillips. Yeah. It's not good. And well, yeah, and like her relationship with her dad, I'm sure, is just fucking done too. It does seem like it supposedly strengthens her relationship with her mom. I guess Valerie. Yeah. I don't know. She hugged her tighter than ever when they, <laughs> they left to the airport or something. She tells David later. Yeah. Another thing we don't see, we just get told about. Yeah, there's a lot of storytelling, and there was some talking about like her childhood traumas and stuff too. She did reveal to David that she was sexually abused. Yeah, which I thought he already knew. It was really no, confusing for me. No, she she he, she told the guy like her childhood crush guy or whatever, mm-hmm. and Kelly knows about it. Why does Kelly of all the people? Why is Kelly one that knows? I think because she wanted to date that guy, and it like it was a whole thing oh. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I guess they had a whole love triangle. But yeah, so that that all gets brought up again, and it's sad and depressing and. Like, makes us hate her mom, but then they're trying to make us feel sorry for her mom at the end, and it's kind of not... It doesn't work for me. No, it doesn't work. And another thing that doesn't work is them just picking up these storylines. And it's like, it, it feels like they're like, hey, let's do something with Bill Taylor and uh, and Valerie's mom. Let's get them together. And they start it for one episode, and they're like, oh, no, no, no. Like, they, it's almost like they have instant audience feedback <laughs> somewhere. And they're like, oh, no, they hate it. They hate it. Fucking abort. <laughs> break this shit up. Right. Because it's like, why? Why did you do this just to break it up in the very next episode? You don't even, like, string it out over the course of a few episodes. Yeah. There are so many things like that. It doesn't make any sense. Like, whole stories that just feel, like, pointless because they just undo them. I still want to know what, what if that uh, Spanish teacher fucked that principal. <laughs> What was that? The first episode. That was like, yeah, I think the first episode, <laughs> and they completely and they completely dropped that shit. I thought of another one, um, a while ago. It just like it occurred to me, like, what the fuck happened to that? And I think it was one that started this season. I want to say it had to do with Valerie, but I can't remember. Like Valerie was gonna do something, and then oh, remember the one where um where uh it wasn't the season. But remember the one where Valerie was being interviewed as like one of the like the fifty hottest people you don't know in, in yeah. LA or whatever? Yeah. That fuck nothing ever happened with that. That's true. That's true. It's yeah, this show is just all over the place. 
They just throw storylines up in the air like confetti and just watch them. Drop. Exactly, it's the Rip Taylor, uh, the the Rip or Rip, yeah, Rip Taylor, the Rip Taylor uh, method of writing a story. You no know Rip Taylor, you, you still throw the confetti in the air. Surprise! Oh, right. okay. <laughs> you know that guy. Sure. <laughs> sure, I do, baby. Anyway. Uh, yes, and that is the episode <laughs> for the week, Hero. So you can write us at latefee nineteen ninety four at awol dot com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com. dot Yep. And share the tapes with your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.